So I'll show you guys how to make a pond fountain nice and cheap. Uh, here in Canada, we have to um, dig our houses down at least four feet. We generally go six, seven or eight feet deep uh, just to get below the frost level because as, thing, as the moisture in the ground freezes, it, it expands and then it lifts up. So we have to go below the frost level. Problem is there's water in the ground. So we dig holes even deeper than that and put a sump pump in there to pump that water out from underneath the house. And when those sump pumps quit, uh, your basement floods because God has a sense of humor. So what we do is the sump pump gets rid of the water and they generally have a three year warranty and they decide to break at three years and one month, they usually burn out. So I take the sump pump from the house and turn it into the fountain. Then I take the one from the fountain, which is now six years old and doesn't work anymore. We don't need that. And then buy a new one for the house. Um, and then in about three years when this one's burnt out, then uh, for good, then uh, if it quits whenever, that's okay. The pond fountain quits, but then at least the house doesn't have a flooded basement. So really simple, some PVC pipe, four pieces. I got them about two feet long. Um, probably don't need that much, but that's just what I came up with. Uh, a little bit of this uh, easy hole stuff, whatever, to kind of center the pump. Uh, another piece of ABS or PVC pipe that is about uh, another foot and a half, two feet long. And then that pretty much press fit over top of the fitting that comes with the sump pump. And you can spin that right in. And then a slightly longer piece of threaded rod. Uh, I got a fitting in here that I put on the lathe, but um, you can just take it put it in a drill and then use a grinder, any fitting that has a hole in it that you can put around the three quarter. So I got a, a nut here and a nut on the inside to keep this fitting tight. And then I just put a little bit of taper on it and the taper is what uh, gives your nice round fountainy look. You can, you can plug it and poke a bunch of holes in the end that looks like crap. So um, this taper works pretty slick. And then a piece of three quarter threaded rod and um, that is about all you need. So for about uh, 200 bucks to initially start, you've got a fountain. So what we're gonna start with on this fountain here on this new pump is drill a 1364 hole in the plastic and then tap. I wanna tap it to a half inch coarse thread. So um, that way you can spin this threaded rod up and down inside this tube because the higher you go out of the tube, the lower your fountain is. And the tighter you go, the more pressure it is, the, the higher your spray will go. So it's kind of trial and error. See if I can whip this together in an hour and have a fountain going. My pond's kind of turning green because we've got such little water this year, barely any rain. So I'm gonna try and keep the water from going stagnant. So here we go. It's hard doing with one hand. <clears throat> I can do it. Okay, here it goes. Yeah. Now, I made three holes here in a triangle, and then I tapped them with a quarter inch tap. You put a little quarter inch bolt in there, and then the bolts hit the threaded rod and center the rod, so you can move your rod over one way or another, so that you don't have all the water coming out one side. So, drop that in. Find that little hole at the bottom and then you can screw that in because that's threaded now. You see that? I can just put a nut on the bottom and that will uh, tighten up against the bottom housing and that will keep that threaded rod from going up and down. Now it's kind of just hanging in there, um, kind of solid. Nice hook up your wire. Uh, put it on an arc fault breaker or GFI and um, make sure everything's sealed nice and plug her in and watch the fountain go. Here we go. Now, this is the old uh, pump, but I just put a piece of wire, I uh, drill a hole on one side and on the other side and then put a piece of wire there and then I have another one that goes into like a C out of heavy uh, electric fence wire and then I have a heavy chain at the bottom of the pond with just a, like the pond was empty, we dug it. So I put a pin in there and I put a chain on the pin 
but you can just put a rock or cement block on the bottom of a chain and then a heavy chain longer than the full height of the pond and then hook the chain on there and then as the level goes up and down with the water um, the chain will just settle at the bottom but it'll still keep the fountain in the same spot so that's what it looks like now um, you can see how dry it is the grass really is kind of brown and I don't have a perfect circle I have it a bit too tight I think so I gotta back it off a little bit but that's not a bad uh, bad looking little fountain there so I like I like the noise I go swimming in here all the time so um, it gets once in a while it gets a little crap in there too uh, so it doesn't uh, make a perfect circle like a piece of little algae or seaweed or something gets stuck on one side and then you can see that that fountain or that spray stops there that's much better than just poking a bunch of holes in the top of a cat so the pond did look a lot nicer got a lot of weeds i gotta take care of that um i got a glass fence all the way around lucked out on that did demolition on a uh, um, tourist attraction they had this balcony that went all the way around they were going to toss it all but it is all laminated safety glass it's the two layer stick you can see that so it keeps kids out and then uh yeah looks nice and my one pontoon is leaking on my dock but huh, here we go hey, hey thanks for watching don't forget to like and subscribe because you never know what you're going to see next week on DeBoss Garage if you like what you see there's a lot of stuff happening to help support the channel and remember if you're not filthy you're not rich